Hey, what are you doing? Instead of playing around, make some food, you good-for-nothing wife. Up until now, my husband has been acting like the boss and making me do his bidding during the early stages of my pregnancy. He finally went so far as to hurl insults at me during my remote meeting and even threw a bucket of water at me. I turned around, soaking wet, and there stood my satisfied husband. What's your problem? You should say that kind of thing after fulfilling your wife's duties, you know? Come on, hurry up with a meal. I had reached my limit at this point. I couldn't stand having a husband who not only bossed me around, but also threw water at his pregnant wife. Before I could protest to my husband, I grinned and said this. Oh, well, my condolences to you. My name is Harper, a 32-year-old working wife. I am an only child, so my immediate family consisted only of my parents who lovingly raised me by themselves. My extended family also cherished me, especially my maternal uncle, Joseph, who is single and treated me like his own daughter. My uncle held a high position as an executive at a major confectionery company, Candy Creations, and he often gave me the sweets they produced. This is a candy that your uncle helped create when he was young. As he said that with a smile, he, my respect for my uncle grew. Gradually, my dream became working for the same company as my uncle. I wanted to plan memorable sweets that would leave a lasting impression on people. During my time in college, I applied to Candy Creations as my top choice and successfully secured an offer. I had kept my family connection a secret, so it was by no means a case of nepotism. My uncle was also pleased with my decision to join the company. However, to avoid any trouble in the future, we had decided to keep our family connection and secret within the company. After joining the company, I worked diligently, but I became so engrossed in my work that I didn't have a boyfriend until my late 20s. Despite my uncle and parents' recommendations for matchmaking, I declined and decided to find a partner on my own. I registered with a marriage consultation agency and met several men. But I couldn't find anyone who truly clicked with me and I was on the verge of giving up. It was at that time that I finally met Elijah, who would later become my husband. Elijah was a salaried employee at a major advertising company, Dynamic Ads. He had a great appearance, and my first impression of him was flawless. Initially, I only revealed that I worked for a confectionery manufacturer, keeping my connections to Candy Creations a secret. In that situation, Elijah said to me, Do you work at a confectionery manufacturer? I absolutely love sweets, you know. I'm particularly fond of Candy Creations gummies. I always have them. He then showed me a pack of gummies from his bag. Those gummies were the first product I had been involved in planning after joining the company. I genuinely felt delighted by Elijah's words. Actually, this is a snack I was involved in planning, so I'm happy you like it. Oh, really? That's quite a coincidence. And so this is how my relationship with Elijah began. Due to our mature ages, after one year of dating, I received a proposal from Elijah. I happily accepted it. After introducing each other to our parents, we decided to have a wedding with only close relatives and friends. Dressed in a wedding gown, I was at the peak of happiness. On the wedding day, my uncle had tears in his eyes as he blessed us. He came to us and expressed words of celebration and I responded with a smile. However, after my uncle had left, Elijah whispered something to me. Hey, is that uncle of yours perhaps a big shot from Candy Creations? Huh? Why do you say that? I've seen him at a competition before. We lost that time, though. Is that so? Harper, isn't it a bit fishy? If Candy Creation's executive is a relative of yours, you could have told us. Could it be that he got hired through connections? I quickly denied it. I've been keeping the fact that he's a relative a secret. Despite conveying this, Elijah smirked. I see. But your uncle seemed quite fond of you, didn't he? Yes, he had been kind to me since I was a child. Another participant approached us, so the conversation ended there. However, Elijah was strangely in a good mood afterward. I had a bad feeling at that moment. Later, Elijah and I moved to a rented apartment, starting a new life. But it was there that I faced a certain problem. By the way, I work in the planning department, so I often have to work overtime, and it's a demanding job. Elijah was aware that I was reasonably busy, so before we got married, we made an agreement to share household chores. 
However, Elijah didn't do any housework at all. When he came home, he would just laze around. Furthermore, he would rush me to prepare meals. Of course, he didn't even bother to clear the dishes after eating. At first, I tried to manage everything by myself, thinking that I had become his wife. However, after living like that for several months, the stress began to build up. One day, I decided to have a frank discussion with Elijah. Hey, Elijah, could you help out with household chores a bit? However, my husband responded with apparent reluctance. What are you talking about? Once we're married, isn't housework the wife's job? That's not the case at all. We both agreed to share it before we got married, right? We're both working, after all. Did we really make such an agreement? Anyway, I don't feel like doing housework. You should do the housework properly, as your duty as a wife. I was stunned by those words and couldn't say anything in response. Since then, Elijah became increasingly domineering. Get this suit dry cleaned. We're running low on socks. Make sure to buy some by tomorrow. He started bossing me around with commanding tones, and eventually, a wife should obey her husband. You lack respect for me. He even started finding fault with me. After a year of living like that, after marriage, I was exhausted. Then, at that time, I had been feeling unwell for a while, so I went to the hospital where I found out I was pregnant. It was still in the early stages, but joy welled up in my heart. I immediately returned home to share the news with Elijah. Elijah, it looks like I'm pregnant. Oh, really? Well, that's good. I felt somewhat let down by his rather indifferent response. For some reason, Elijah was in a good mood and even humming a tune. Did something good happen? You seem unusually cheerful. When I asked this, Elijah's eyes lit up and he said, Actually, we just secured a contract with Candy Creations. So now your company is a client. Huh? This time, Candy Creations is going to release snacks for pregnant women. Our company is going to handle that PR entirely, and we've got plenty of budget. Lucky us. That was certainly a project being carried out by a different team from mine. I hurriedly explained. I can't believe it, but did you say something to Uncle Elijah? Huh? I just greeted everyone in the presentation, that's all. What? If you do that, people around you will find out. It's not a big deal, right? We got the contract because of it. I used our relationship and the directors to our advantage, but it's all part of the job. With this, my evaluation at Dynamics Ads is secure. Saying that, Elijah whistled while loosening his tie. When I called my uncle and asked about it, he told me with a wry smile. When people found out that Elijah was a relative of mine, they became very attentive. I told them that choosing the advertising agency should be unrelated to that. Uncle, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Elijah's company will surely do good work. Harper, you don't need to worry. My uncle said that, but I was dissatisfied with my husband's behavior. By the way, how have things been lately? Are you getting along well with Elijah? My uncle asked me that, but I couldn't say he was acting like a dictator, so I just told him that I was pregnant. He was very happy and told me to take care of my health, then he hung up. I had planned to continue working, but my morning sickness was worse than I had imagined. I couldn't stay on my feet because of the nausea, and I was constantly going back and forth between the bedroom and the bathroom. It was impossible for me to go to the office in that condition, and with the advice from those around me, I decided to take a one-month leave until my morning sickness improved. Candy Creations was a company that was understanding of employees' pregnancies and childbirth, so my request for leave was quickly approved. When I informed Elijah about my leave, he showed reluctance. When I informed him about my morning sickness, he also expressed disapproval. Huh? I've never heard of taking a leave for morning sickness or something like that. It can't be helped. My health is really bad right now. Pregnancy and childbirth aren't illnesses, you know? Taking leave for just morning sickness? You're not being a responsible professional, are you? Even if you say that... In frustration, I bit my lip, and Elijah continued. Well, whatever. Since you're staying at home, make sure to take care of all the housework perfectly, okay? Huh? That's why I... I can't even stand up because of the morning sickness. Can't you understand? Don't be so dependent. If you're not working, don't rely on me for everything. If you don't do the household chores, it won't end well for you. His words were so harsh that I felt dizzy. 
as he had declared Elijah demanded perfect housekeeping from me, even though I was struggling with morning sickness. For example, I would feel nauseous at the smell of pasta boiling, so I had resorted to using frozen pasta. However, Elijah quickly noticed it and harshly criticized me. Hey, what is this? You're feeding me frozen pasta. Elijah, you used to eat it without any complaints. You're supposed to be a homemaker and you can't even make pasta? Are you really that useless? He continued to criticize my household chores and make sarcastic comments, all the while refusing to help with them. I struggled to cope with morning sickness, but still tried to fulfill my husband's demands by doing the housework. Around three weeks into my leave, something unexpected happened. I received a sudden call from the company. I am well aware that you are on leave, but I would like you to attend the remote meeting this coming Saturday. I heard the details of that meeting and agreed without hesitation. On the Saturday morning in question, Elijah was still asleep, so I sat in front of the computer in the study and joined the remote meeting. I was feeling better that day, with my morning sickness under control. I participated in the remote meeting, offering my opinions and taking notes on the meeting content. Just as I was speaking, the study door behind me creaked open. Hey, what are you doing? Instead of playing around, make some food, you good-for-nothing wife. Then he splashed a bucket of water on me from behind. When I turned around, there was Elijah standing there with a satisfied expression. What's your problem? You should say such things after fulfilling your wife's duties, you know? Come on, hurry up with a meal. I had reached my limit at this point. Having a husband who not only bossed me around, but also threw water at his pregnant wife was unbearable. Before protesting to Elijah, I grinned and said, Oh, well, condolences to you. Huh? What the hell are you talking about? Elijah furrowed his bro. I slid my chair and adjusted the computer screen of the remote meeting to make it visible to him. Wh why Elijah's face gradually turned pale. On the screen were my husband's company's advertising team, along with the representatives from Candy Creations, including my uncle. There were looks of astonishment, disgust, and anger, especially on my uncle's face. I was in the middle of a remote meeting. Huh? Why are you participating while on leave? Well, you know, you secured this project for advertising targeting pregnant women, right? I was asked to participate because they wanted to hear from a pregnant employee. The, that can't be... Then my uncle at the back of the screen addressed me. Harper, are you okay? Since you were splashed with water, shouldn't you go to the hospital? The remote meeting participants expressed concern for me, one after another. Uncle, I'm fine. Thank you, everyone. Upon my response, my uncle says sternly. Now, everyone from Dynamic Ads, is he the sales representative from your company who handled this project? Yes, he is from our company. As the manager of Dynamic Ads answered with a trembling voice, my uncle continued. The Dynamic Ads developed this product with the intention of caring for pregnant women. But for the person responsible to behave so outrageously towards his pregnant wife, frankly, we've lost trust in your company. W wait uh, Executive Director! Despite the manager of Dynamic Ads, frantic attempts to stop him, my uncle continued coldly. Personally, I'm inclined to terminate the contract altogether. We will reconsider it internally and get back to you, so please wait for a while. One by one, my uncle and the representatives from Candy Creations exited the remote meeting. The only ones left were the members of Dynamic Ads, where my husband worked. Elijah, what have you done? We're about to lose a major contract. No, even before that, is such behavior even acceptable as a human being? Chastised by the manager, my husband answered with a pale face. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Do you always treat your wife like this? Huh? Is that the case? W well... When Elijah choked on his words, the female advertising designer from Dynamic Ads, who was present, spoke up. He poured water on his pregnant wife and asked her to make dinner. That's... Truly unbelievable. Starting with her comment, the attendees from Dynamic Ads criticized him one by one, saying things like, This is terrible, and so Elijah was like this. W wait, everyone, it's a misunderstanding. 
As Elijah desperately shouted, the members of Dynamic Ads continued to leave the remote meeting one by one. Soon, there was no one left on the conference screen. My husband knelt on the floor, bowing his head in despair. Just then, the intercom rang. When I answered it, my uncle was standing there. I came because I was worried. Are you really okay physically? I was still soaked by a nodded in response to my uncle's words. Then my husband rushed out of the study and prostrated himself in front of my uncle. <laughs> Executive Director, I am truly sorry for the trouble I have caused you. Please just spare us the contract termination. However, my uncle looked down at Elijah and said, Isn't the person you should be apologizing to someone else? Oh. Until that moment, Elijah had likely not considered me much. He turned pale, and when he looked at me, he desperately clung to me. Harper, I'm truly sorry. Please, forgive me. Can you say something to the executive for me? I forcefully pushed Elijah away. Don't play around. You've treated me poorly both before and during pregnancy. Marrying you was a mistake in itself. I've already decided to get a divorce. What? Divorce? Harper, you can't be serious. Saying that household chores are a wife's duty? That way of thinking is completely outdated. We're both working, so where's the logic in not sharing household responsibilities? Is your mind like an outdated, rusty computer that refuses to update? H Harper! Be prepared, you worthless man, because I'm going to claim alimony and child support. When I spat out those words, Elijah burst into tears, his face covered in tears and snot. My uncle sighed and took me away from the scene. That's how I returned to the safety of my family home. Later, Elijah and I divorced. As a substitute for alimony, I received all of our shared savings. We settled things with a lump sum payment for child support. Afterward, Candy Creations terminated its contract with Dynamic Ads. Elijah was forced to take responsibility and was moved from the flowery sales department to a less cushy position. Elijah's wrongdoings were already widely known at Dynamic Ads. Unable to bear the hushed whispers and rumors, Elijah chose to resign voluntarily. It seems he ended up unemployed. Since he made a lump sum payment for child support and had no savings, he now lives in a rundown apartment and is desperately searching for a new job. Even hearing that, I have no sympathy whatsoever. I can only hope he reflects on his actions. As for me, I recently gave birth to an adorable little girl. Both my parents and my uncle are overjoyed, and my daughter is thriving with the love and care of those around her. I've returned to work, and I'm juggling between my job and raising my child every day. From now on, I want to look forward to my life with enthusiasm, enjoying my daughter's growth.